talk about oh oh another development in the brian, brian callen um v sexual assault um accusers debacle that's um grip the comedy scene he gripped the podcast scene or in generally negative affected him i don't think anyone else cares or out, outside of people that watch the stuff that i put out but god damn it man what an in, what a shit show what a shit show of a situation so i i mentioned prior on shows that i think in general that he probably went about this the wrong way you know brian callen being accused by four separate women of um some sexual crime here you know some very variation of a sexual assault one alleges rape other people uh, allege you know um unwanted attention groping all this sort of nonsense um and the allegations were serious enough for him to get essentially pulled off his podcast not allowed to record in the same studio with brian or brendan or not be on camera with him has to do a show behind a uh, a pay one patron lost his netflix deal with crystalia of course it makes sense because crystalia has got his own situation going on and has essentially been ousted or excommunicated from the comedy scene overall joe rogan hasn't mentioned him ever since the allegations arose it's been completely mute on brian callan in that respect and you know he's had to essentially suffer on the outskirts um whilst these allegations are running rampant in the scene and um he decides of course the best way to do it is to sort of kind of attack it go on the front foot um put put it out there that he didn't do it put out there that the, the allegations are false and he's going to clear his name but he doesn't clear his name and now i don't know how he's going to clear his name because some of the allegations are more than 20 years old but surely the best way to go about this isn't to just come, jump back onto cameo isn't to do a podcast behind a patreon isn't to suddenly have a Callum report at podcast you know um under the premise that you were gonna do a fire in the rings that gets pulled because cast media are your overlords and then you do an entire bait and switch and get sam Tripoli involved who you know i'm sure the fan base of the fire kid have no business to listen to because it's not really a conspiracy podcast in that respect so it's been an entire shit shot to shit shot to shit shot to shit shot and then you think about it in context and you think considering all the times that they've been on their show the final kid and they've spoken about cancel culture issues and people in media going through um you know allegations um regarding me too you'd think they have a better idea and a better um way of dealing with the situation because i can only think if this happened to brendan this would be even worse of a situation right the way he goes on and how he talks and how he's so reckless with the things that he's saying he doesn't really think about how he puts information out there or how he even formulates sentences it's just surprising to me how shitty they've handled this considering how much how strong of opinion they have when other people are going through certain things and how they deal with it and um in brian callan's case it's only gone from bad to worse now because supposedly the husband of one of the women who um is uh claiming that brian callan raped her he is now suing and that person has now launched a gofundme in order to cover his legal cost so if if this drama couldn't get any more embarrassing couldn't get any more excruciating for the victims is it allegedly victims it's all getting played out in public again it's just got even worse where this kind of um public back and forth between uh gabriel tigerman i think his name is and brian cannon it's really really ridiculous situation to be involved in i guess if you're brian cannon especially considering you know the fact that I think this is all self-inflicted for the most part. But anyway, this is Los Angeles Times. Say, Brendan Callan, Sue's husband of women who claimed he, um, the comedian raped her. Says, yeah, Brian Callan is suing the husband of a woman who claims the comedian raped her, arguing his spouse, her spouse, sorry, is out to ruin his career. On Wednesday, Callan filed a complaint in Los Angeles Superior Court alleging that Gabriel Tigerman has launched an ongoing campaign to destroy the comic's livelihood via threats of harassment, intimidation, and third parties that dare contact him. Tigerman is married to Kathleen Fior Tigerman, um, who in July told the LA Times in 1999 that Callan held her down on bed and forced her to have sex with him. She was one of the four women who claimed that Callan had sexually inappropriate with him and with them saw in a story that described his alleged assault, misconduct and disturbing comments. Callan adamantly denied all the women's stories and stressed that their encounter with Fiori had been consensual. On social media, he quickly vowed to lay low and promising his fans that he wouldn't post a statement and disappear. Now, the statement and disappear thing is odd, isn't it? I think, because I guess... The problem that he has maybe is that he's looking at it through the lens of cancel culture, which it isn't. This is somebody alleging that you did something sexually inappropriate to them. It's not the same thing as cancel culture. So when you're looking at it through the lens of cancel culture, I, I can understand the, the tendency or the desire to defend yourself and to go out and, and rewrite the wrongs and kind of change the narrative. But if, if we learned anything from people's other people's scandals, it doesn't work. You can't defend yourself in public. It doesn't always backfire, especially if it's some, you know, anything involving a woman and a man, especially when the, the man's the one being alleged to have done a crime. You have to deal with it a bit more sensitive 
sensitivity and be understanding of the climate and maybe do lay low um you know i look at somebody like a Neil deGrasse tyson when he got accused of something and he had to kind of let it play out let the let the um network i think it might have been cbs something do an internal investigation um you know decide what they want to do and then whatever decision they make you accept and you move on right they kind of close the chapter but you don't go and rubbing people's face in it into decision making wise you don't go on shows and be cry social media be cry the perils of social media and sort of criticize me too and attack prominent figures within the you know women empowerment movement you don't do that stuff because any because even if you're over in your right even if you're accurate you know defending yourself you know for the benefit of your family is always going to make you look bad and if anything it's going to empower other people who have have other questionable experiences with you to come out and add further fuel to a fire to bury you completely so that's where i think he really fucked up in that respect he saw it through the lens of cancel culture thought he could defend himself and be on the front foot and instead it's only gone and kicked and bit him in the back um, it continues, or oh, picking the back side, sorry. Um, though he has taken a leave of absence from his podcast, which again, he didn't really take. If you think you look at it properly, he didn't take the leave of absence. The cast media are the ones that told him he couldn't go back on the show, right? They essentially are the ones that approved the sponsorships of the show, I think, for the most part. They handle that side of things. I don't think they've handled production. Someone said that they don't really probably do that. Chin probably handles that himself. But they, they are responsible for getting the sponsors involved. And I guess if you're fired a kid and you don't want to do that sort of stuff and you're too busy comics, it makes sense to sign up with cast media, right? Because they just handle all that sort of stuff they kind of remind me a little bit of machinima in that respect remember that sort of like what were they what were they mcm right on youtube that basically took a cut of people's um google adsense money but then put them in contact with big brands and sponsorships and whatever it may be so that makes sense if you're a big comedian and you're touring all over the place it, you know running a podcast on your own probably is a lot of work even though joe rogan does it without the help but you know he's got ben pick your souls that help that does the same sort of thing so i can understand it but essentially cast media definitely told us not going to podcast we continue said the fire and the kid callan has continued to book up a coming stand-up states despite the fact that he was dropped by his hollywood representative the caa one of the biggest entertainment um uh, agencies out there they've got a pretty good book at the moment out as well at the moment if you want to check it out it definitely it talks about you know the founding of caa um and essentially they are the power brokers in that industry right they actually when they press the button you go up right and you know many comedians know as soon as you're signed up with a caa or wme your career is definitely on the ascendancy it continues here it says i'm canon best known for his role at abc the goldbergs and schooled was also set to make a netflix prank show with his comic chris Alia, but the program was scrapped um scrapped sorry after the day was accused of sexual assault too so again you you know you don't deal with it the right way you get off your podcast your date and then you announce dates which is also always a bit of a thumbing of the nose to allegations in that respect right you should always you know probably take Take your take yourself out of the limelight and treat this allegation with some sort of severity but again he didn't do that it says upon learning of Callum's future gigs Gabriel Tigman reached out via email to Twitter to a number of the comedy clubs that booked Callum on September 11th Tigman tweeted that the venues were sending the very clear message that they support and sexual abusers and don't believe victims by hosting Callum's shows his message garnered support from other prominent voices comedy world including Jen Kirkman who said she would donate five pounds to five dollars sorry to the rape abuse um incest um national national network he's just a nasty place in a nasty network to be part of imagine telling your friends where you work i work at the rape abuse incest national network that's mad on behalf of any of my persons who told um the indians indiana's helium comedy club that they are disappointed that they are booking a credibly alleged rapist da, da, da. but he's not right he's a he's not he's not a um he's not a credibly alleged rapist he is a lead rapist that's his difference and again I don't really have an issue with Gabriel Tigerman doing this, what he's doing for his wife, right? You're going to be ride or die for your partner. You believe your partner is what it is. I guess, you know, his loyalties are always going to be to his wife. He's never going to question her account of things. Even if it's proven that Callan is innocent, I would imagine he'll still be like, no, he's guilty. I understand that. I get it. Love is involved there. But there's a part of me that thinks you can say what you want on social and kind of publicly besmirch his name but purposely reaching out to places and calling up and telling them not to book him is really really going over the top i think in that respect i think you should let it play out as it is for the most part he's essentially been excommunicated most of these dates he booked probably wouldn't have sold out anyway the fact that he kept promoting them because that's another tip as well just keep your eye on that one the fact that he kept had to promote them in the first place he knew that if he didn't promote them no one's going to buy the tickets to them think about the shows that louis ck done in the wake of his allegations he just put them out there and people just attended right they most of the tickets sold out he did an entire tour he put out a comedy album that did really well i'd assume because he kind of put out directly for his own site so i think those kind of guys at that level of notoriety can do that but when you're brian cannon unfortunately he knows that most of his fan base or most of the tick sales that he got was directly attributed to the work that he did on the fire and the kid and the fact that he's not on the fire and the kid and the fact that he's out of sight out of mind 
naturally fans move on so he's very conscious of that that's why he went on his show on Patreon which definitely led to all this stuff right the fact that he announced it in public led to all of this stuff because I don't think those people would have known that he did shows if he didn't announce them so he announced them he put it out there and essentially um, he shot himself in the foot in that regard so he's going to skirt himself to blame but I do think it is going too far to contact the clubs directly I think Jen Kirkman Gabriel Tigerman they're more than you know you're more than your right to go out there and put a statement online leave a comment underneath the tweets or something I don't know whatever you want to do but calling them up or threatening to you know um i don't know threatening a bomb threat whatever allegedly i wouldn't say they did it but let's say something on those kind of lines that's when you're going over the top it says here the times confirmed on wednesday that four locations the brickyard comedy club in oklahoma skyline comedy club in appleton wise guys in spokane um so so the spokane comedy club and um, the dc improv in washington recently pulled kind of shows from their schedules again considering that he has a family to look after right and he has a wife to look after who happens to be a woman <laughs> it's really ironic that these same people that are like you know um saying counterculture doesn't exist are also the ones that are you know essentially taking food off the plate food off the table of somebody that's trying to support their you know daughter and their kind of ex-wife in that sort of respect you know it's, that's always interesting anyway it continues um callan blames the cancellation on these gigs on tickman's reg for interference according to his lawsuit which again is a little bit obsessive obs obfuscating ob obfuscating the truth yeah whatever that term is because part of the reason why his data got cancelled is because he put himself in a position where he could get alleged where you know where he could be alleged of those crimes that he's alleged of right it's only his fault really the fact that these things have happened now he could say no they're not true the allegations but you can't blame the the just because these things happen as a consequence of some actions that you might have done in the past don't mean it's the person's fault that these things happen i'd say in that regard if that makes any sense it says i'm driven by a false allegation that callan assaulted his wife over 20 years ago mr tickman has sent and continues to send mr Callan representative and others direct demands that they cease doing business with him or else falsely brand support of sexual assault now again i'm thinking about it as well part of me thinks if you're Kellen, right just let this thing ride out it's this is not done in good this is not done in um this is not done in good faith. This is obviously a bad thing. Um, I think, you know, we can all say that's the thing, right? You can't go around trying to ruin somebody's business opportunities because you think a certain thing happened, right? You have to let it go out, play out in the court systems in some way, shape or form. Now, if we get to the point where you can't, you can't, you know, you can't convict somebody in a court of law because these cases are more than, you know, two decades old, fair enough. Then sometimes, you know, you have to do what you have to do. But, Part of me thinks if you're Callan, do you re should it, is it really wise to sue somebody off the back of some of this stuff, especially considering the allegations? Wouldn't it be wouldn't it kind of help his position further if he just came out and said, Hey, I understand what you're doing, right? I get it, you're protecting your wife, but um I would ask that you kind of give me the chance to support my family in any way, shape I can. Um, you know, especially when you consider that I haven't in charge of anything. And if I do get formally charged, you're more than willing and more than able, you're more than your rights to keep continuing to cancel my career. But as is especially considering the times we're living in now, give me the chance to make money and support my family. You're, you, I think that that could be a fair enough um, reaction and people could understand, okay, cool, that's that, that's fair. But to go out there and publicly try and tarnish somebody, especially once but there's, no, there's only allegations out there, is maddening, isn't it? But again, Callan, should he be suing somebody? I don't think so. None of the four clubs that scrapped Callan's gigs responded to the questions for the Times. CA and Innovative both declined to comment. In a statement provided by his lawyer, Andrew Baum, Callan said he filled a lawsuit because I take my innocence and reputation right to due process very seriously and I will not stand by while somebody tries to destroy my livelihood over something I did not do. Fine. But it's interesting that he's suing the husband and not the, and not the actual women that alleged his stories, isn't it? I'm guessing some of these stories are true in terms of they had an encounter, but then he probably alleges that the actual incident sexual assault didn't actually happen i don't know who who knows um and then yeah here's the guy's go fund me and at the moment of speaking let's refresh it so far he's on twenty five thousand, right and he's halfway to approaching his goal which you'll probably end up getting and some of the donations um from the people um on the side are really funny you know a lot of the, a lot of the names are purposely um trolly i uh, says right i can't talk of course you know where that comes from dicey dicey b a lot of um homeless cats in the uh, in the comments here leaving donations and i think the funny and unfortunate side of this issue is that because of the backlash that these guys especially brendan and brian got because of their reaction to covid and how they dealt with it when they got covid and just generally how the podcast has kind of dipped and um they've kind of turned into people who their fans don't necessarily like anymore especially some of the detractors quote unquote um they're using this opportunity to actually bury callan which is funny because out of the two of them you'd consider callan to be the one that's probably 
the more liked within the fan base, even from some of the people that hate the show now. I think Callum still gets a lot more benefit of doubt. Even the fans that hate the show say, you know, they should get Callum back on it, right? Just for the benefit of the show going forward because Brendan with guests is just terrible, right? Now it's got better because he's kind of, you know, learned to listen to people speak a little bit more, um, especially the Malik and Chappelle Lacey. They were really good guests, but so, you know, so far it's been a bit hit and miss with Brendan doing on his own. Um, but anyway, in general, when Callum's on his own before, he's been a bit hit and miss too. So they need each other to make it work but that's the unfortunate side of things right Callan's just you know not reckless but the fact that he's been so defensive in the weird in the wrong way because he's looking at it through the prism of counter culture he's essentially made this situation worse for himself and now we're in a position where fans are you know um actively look at this yeah? brendan slob jesus espinoza um another anonymous you got here you got here rworded.com which again this is a, i think it's a website that they kind of if you go on t5k it kind of links back to that website right um all these people that essentially want to see those guys get buried who think you know brendan shouldn't deserve a stand-up career and that he's only there because of his friends with rogan all these people are the ones that are now going out and publicly trying to end their career so again what an unfortunate state of affairs what an unfortunate event in all of it and again there's in the midst of all this there are alleged victims who are just you know having all these things play out their stories and their traumas replayed out in public Kellen out there trying to make his career pop again um not really understanding the current climate that's going out there and um yeah man just mad nonsense and again if, if ever there was a cautionary tale of not of how not to deal with allegations this is it this is definitely the one like don't deal with it in this way because it's, it never really ends well so yeah um, let me know your comments are man regarding this what do you think um do you think brian's overstepping the mark by trying to sue this gabriel tigerman do you think gabriel tigerman was in his like does gabriel tigerman come out this looking any way bad the fact that he's crowdsourcing funds from strangers to support a court case that's his own doing as well right he went out of his way to publicly defend his wife and contact people and do things that were probably over the top so why is he now asking for help from strangers is that a bad thing is that a good thing um, again, the the wife that's involved, she's actually the one that was a victim and this is quiet and just suffering in silence. It's just, it's just horrible having to, imagine having to relive this trauma, like especially publicly in this way. It's just mad, isn't it? Absolutely mad. But yeah, let me know your thoughts um, uh, regarding the situation in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you're saying regarding everything that's happening. Um, again, it's, it's interesting to see how this, see this, how this plays out. But again, in my opinion, I definitely think this is a good lesson. And you know that thing, is it? This is how you don't play. Those sort of compilations of really shitty computer game players out there like DSP and what's the other guy? Wings of Redemption, is that his name? Wings or something, whatever, yeah? It's like that kind of thing, isn't it? If, this, if that is do not, ha this, is, this is how you don't play. This is how you don't respond to allegations, right? Or react to allegations, especially when they're involving a sexual in their nature. You just can't go about it this way. This is just horrible, horrendous way to deal with it. And again, he only has himself to blame, really. Even if he's innocent, he only has himself to blame. He put his family, his friends through in a really um, shitty position and how he's dealt with it really in my in my in my opinion but hey maybe there's more information will come to light maybe i'm completely off the mark here but i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below anyway